Hey, welcome to Once Upon a Game. I'm Kevin Kitchens. This episode, we're going to be starting a playthrough of Blackout Hong Kong. It's by Eckert Spiel. So I'm setting up for the first uh, chapter in the uh, solo campaign. Well, it's the campaign. I'll be playing it solo. Um, uh, still got a few steps to go here. Uh, I've already put my, my uh, score marker at zero. Um, there are 48 uh, of these search tokens, uh, and I went ahead and shuffled those and put three on each of the 16 districts that you're trying to, uh, to secure. And you'll do little searches during each round to try to find resources. Um, so in the game, these are locations, and then the connected areas are considered a district. This is the 72 card uh, objective deck. And what I'm gonna do now is, uh, I've actually already shuffled them. Um, each of the uh, five scenarios has some special setup instructions. And what I did, this is not part of the game, but it's something I made and you can download it, but it uh, breaks down the slight variations to setup that you need as well as your winning conditions. So we're playing chapter one. So we're going to pull out 33 cards from the deck. That'll be reserved deck. I'll explain that in a minute. We are going to use only emergency plan A, which is some additional uh, benefits we can get. And actually is one of the win conditions. We have to complete all three uh, of those um, objectives on the emergency plan to win. In addition to uh, scoring 75 points to get two orchid tree stars uh, your goal is to get as many as you can and there's the uh, scoring so five missions you get all three you get a perfect score if you only get uh, two on each you'll get ten which is good and if you're playing multiplayer you can get there's a one level once one, one uh, orchid tree level but you have in solo you have to meet the two orchid tree level for a victory so so the card deck here um, is sort of a timing mechanic. Grab two there. All right, so these get set aside as a reserve deck that will get used later. And then the rest of these will go here as a draw deck. All right, and one of the steps we do is to uh, put three cards in each of these slots here. And those are the cards we can try to try to buy to give us plans to win. So this is a when this deck runs out completely, not when you want to draw another card, but when the deck, the last card gets drawn, uh, you will trigger the end game. And triggering the end game means you will finish that turn. You get to play one more turn and try to get as many points or fulfill your goals as you can. All right, so one cool thing about this is there is no more shuffling of cards once you start the game, which is really nice. So you're kind of managing your hand. You have uh, 12 cards to start, and uh, you'll be able to play through them, uh, and then you bring them back into your hand, but they're just in your hand. You don't have to shuffle. So you have 25 uh, resource cubes. That are used for various, um, we call them marker cubes really. Uh, they're for various uh, functions of the game. And you got these five houses. You can see them, they look like little houses here. And what they do is they're initially going to be covering spaces on your board. I'll explain those later. But they cover these check marks. And later in each turn, if you have any of these available, you can take these bonus actions. Uh, if you can pay the cost, then you can take the action. So it's a way to, to get resources and get points. And you'll remove those by securing a district. And you secure a district by adding a cube on locations completely surrounding one. And then you can secure it and you score points for the number of, uh, the number of uh, locations surrounding it. So you, there's one here in the middle that's got seven. 
right there is the biggest one, and that's worth 14 points. And the game pretty much plays the same as the multiplayer. Uh, there's a few, like I said, there's a few little changes. Uh, and then the campaign scenarios play pretty similar to the regular game uh, with, again, a few target goals. So it uh, plays very well solo. So it's very cool. So we're still setting up. Trying to get this finished here real quick. So one of the first things we do is we get an initial resource here on the, what looks like a battery. And that's a Joker resource. These other resources are food, uh, parts, gasoline, water. Uh, they call this book, but I always call it knowledge, and then medical. So these are going to randomly be available each turn. And then you will use your, and you'll see how we, as we play it out, but uh, you'll use your, what are called volunteers, cards to go and collect those supplies. All right, so we got our, we've got that, we've got that set up. Um, these are these are my twelve cards here, and the first thing I do is I take my. Now, normally, uh, when you play, there's your player board. This would be the side would be your hospital, but it's worked out easier for me to set up to make the hospital at the top because nothing else goes up there. So I just remember the hospitals there. But normally you're supposed to have it here, but to save table space. I've set them at the top. So um, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to put the double blue card and we need our leader card. And she the scout is going to go into the hospital as well. So in order to use these two, we're going to have to get them out of the hospital. Well, fortunately, as you might have seen, we do have a medic, and that medic's action, when we play her, we can use a medical pack, and we get to take the card out of the hospital. And fortunately, the doctor can never go on missions, which would send her to the hospital. So she's always available if you have her out of your card slots. So the last thing we do is we take one of our yellow cards, put it into the slot. We have one, two, three slots. We have a fourth one we can unlock later in the game based on if we pay 10 money, uh, as well as have a slot that has two purples and two yellow cards in it. So you gotta manage your cards well. Uh, and then we take a blue card and put it in that slot. And then a red card and put it on top of that. So these cards are not uh, those five cards are not available for play, so we start with seven cards. Okay? And that's what we've got, and those are just in hand. There's no, like I said, there's no shuffling involved with those. All right. One cool thing about the player board, too, is that it has the turn order uh, right there, and you mark it with the purple marker, and you move it up, and you can see what turn you're supposed to be doing, or what uh, phase of the round, excuse me, that you're in. Uh, all right, and the last step is we get to put a marker uh, on any one location on the board. So hold on, we'll, we'll get one more thing first. Um, you get, these are, these slots here, these four, three slots are uh, for objectives that you're trying to complete. And when you complete them, you'll gain the card, either cards into your hand or get some stuff to put over here in your check mark, check mark area which gives you additional actions on the card as well. So right now we have none, so we can't complete any objectives. Well, you get to start with some. And they give you a deck here of eight starter cards. And there are two with the blue. And there are three red and three yellow, okay? Okay, so I've got them set up here. These are the starter cards. And I'm going to use them randomly just by rolling a die. Because uh, you get two to start with. So, Alright, so we've got a two. So we'll take this one here. We'll look at it in a second. The reason I'm, you do this first is, uh, first of all, that's how it's structured. And also because it'll help you pick some other, make some other decisions here in a minute. So now I've got seven. So I'm going to say a eight is a reroll. And we got four, so one, two, three, four. And we'll take this one. 
here, number four that's left. Bring that over, the rest of these go back in the box. All right, so the ones we got were a yellow, a double yellow and a double red, and the odds were in, in our favor. So these are gonna go in the object, objective spaces of our board. And the way you get these is in your turn, if I can discard one food and one parts, then I can take this card into my hand. Plus I get to place a marker onto a yellow space, provided it's adjacent to a space I already have, which is why we're gonna get one free in a minute. Same thing here with the red. If I pay one knowledge and one food, uh, then I'll take that card and place one on a red. Okay, so that's how that works. And that's how most of these are all gonna work too. These are ones you can buy later in a later round, or excuse me, a later phase of the round. And they all have different prices and they all have different victory point values. Um, so you'll see it in a little bit, but um, essentially what happens is the number the number of these red cubes or red markers here tell you how many of each resource you're going to get based on what is currently the red resource. And that will be determined at the beginning of each round by rolling these dice. And these dice are not identical. That is their distribution. So you can kind of get a feel for it. And what happens is when you roll the dice, you'll put the die on this rondelle and... Um, uh, then you'll spend your volunteers, uh, well, at least the ones that I have still in my hand here, you get to spend those volunteers to, uh, to claim those resources. And then you claim resources just by putting cubes in here, and they stay here, except food and water. Those get wasted at the end of each turn, uh, so you, you either make money or uh, you can get search, search tokens, which help you... Uh, which help you in searching later. Again, this is not a, this is not a full how to play, it's a watch me play kind of thing. So uh, you'll see how it goes, how it goes along as I go along. So you have 25 of these cubes and they are, again, we've already put one out on the, uh, on the wild card resource and that's good. That can be spent anywhere you would spend another resource, except in the waste phase. You can't waste it as food and water, uh, but you can spend it anywhere else to fulfill any kind of these objectives, so on and so forth. So, don't need you anymore. This does not come with the game, by the way. Just something I used. Also, we get um, five of these transport markers. I may have taken too many. Yep, so there's. Okay, and what these do is they're going to let you mitigate some of the variability in the game. So if you want to, let's say, uh, this, say this came up food for a turn, right? And you played your red and you wanted, instead of food, you wanted supplies. Because it's one away, you could pay one of your transport tokens. Right? And it would let you put your resource, claim this resource instead of that resource. And you can go two away if you need to, you go three away, two, three. So you really want to maximize where you go. But the good thing is this is determined at the beginning of the round. So you can determine what cards that you want to put out and you'll play up to three cards. Uh, later, up to four cards. If like I said, you unlock this space. So we'll get to that in a minute. So we have that and we also get to start with um, four money. And the third time playing this, I should actually get eight money because each time you fail, you play it again with uh, two more. So I played it at four and lost, I played it at six and lost. So then, you know, you, your handicap is that you get a couple more, uh, a couple more coins. But um, for the purpose of this video, I'm gonna show you how to play it as is. And if I win, then I'll count it. And if I don't, then I'll count it. It doesn't matter. And I'll just start the next one with uh, with ten. So uh, I think then that we are completely set up. Uh, there's a, there's another option here. You'll see this marker goes down. You can purchase uh, the zero to six marker, and basically, uh, like I said, you have a hand of seven cards, and you will work your way. You'll work those down, and then when you're below 
initially when you're below four cards, four and under, you get to refresh your hand, which means you get to take this stack off the board that has the most cards in it. You take them off your player board and put them back in your hand. So again, you see there's a pattern match there. You want to build a you want to build a slot with two purples and two yellows. There's a pattern match there. You want to build a slot, two blues and two reds. So there's times you want to really control where you put your cards and not, not pull them up too quickly. Okay, I did forget one step, and that is I get to place uh, one of my location cubes on one of the locations here. Um, so let's let's go over what our objectives are again. I said that uh, I have to get 75 points. That's the easy, that's not the easy one, but it's the easy one to remember. Now, normally in a multiplayer game, you would be assigned, there's four emergency plans, A through D. You'd get one randomly assigned to you, and that would go on this slot of your board, which goes unused in the campaign game. So the way it works in the campaign game is that with one player, one or two players, you get emergency plan A, um, I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's A and B probably or something. So these stay out by the board instead of over there on the uh, player mat. Um, and you have to complete each of these objectives. Okay. So I'll explain what these are. During the claim objectives phase, which we'll get to later, if you can have a route on the map from A to A. So we got A on the map. Right, and it goes up to A up there. So you have to connect the line. And I believe it's the same no matter what path you take. It's, it's uh, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, yeah, or one, let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five. Oh, it's five. Oh, that's good. So, uh, but you just got to complete a route from A to A. So that's one of your goals, so we want to be able to do that. Uh, the other option is if you have one of your slots that has a purple, blue, yellow, yellow, then you will get five points, and you'll complete that one. And then these search tokens, uh, there's seven different types. Uh, some give you, like this one gives you victory points, this one gives you fuel. So I have to, I have, to have collected a search type of victory points and a search type of fuel to get that. So I have to complete all three of these. And the last time I played, I didn't get that one. So first time I played, I did all this and didn't get all the points. So I focused on points too much and not on getting the search tokens. Searching will take place in another step. We'll show you how that works too. So what I was going to say is because we need to go A to A, we've got a purple, blue, red, yellow, red. And when we claim these two guys, here, or this lady and this gentleman, we are going to get to place a yellow and a red, right? So we'll get to place those two, and they have to be, they have to be next to um, one of yours that's already on the board, or you can pay a transport token for everyone you skip, okay? So, since we don't have a purple, off the bat, uh, and it does not look like we have a option right now to get one, except these wild cards. These will let you put one on anything when you complete it. Um, I think I'm going to go ahead and claim the blue. All right. So I'm going to go there, and if I get the red first, then I can put a red and yellow, then I can get the yellow, and that'll work just fine. Okay, so we are now ready to start our game. So the first phase is to roll the resource dice and plan cards. So we're gonna roll the dice here. Now they have to have, all have different faces showing. And in this case they do. We got knowledge, we got tools or parts, and we got medical. So that's good because we can get some medical points and and bring somebody out of the hospital early on if we want to. And you also get victory points for the when you take out of the hospital too. So if we bring our leader, we immediately get three victory points. So that's pretty nice. 
All right, so how planning your cards works is you can put from your hand up to one card in each of these three slots. All right, and you put them, you put them face down. So then you, you know, to, to lock them in and then you flip them over and you can resolve them in any order you want. So you, just because you put something in the, in the first slot doesn't mean it has to be enacted first, right? But you may be targeting that slot because you're trying to do that pattern matching for something. And some of the objective cards have pattern matching. So going into this, we now know that we need food and tools or knowledge and food to get one of these volunteers into our hand. So let's look at what we've got here to start the game. We have four money, and then we have these seven cards. So we've got our mechanic who gives us money. And on these, they have two. You can you get three money immediately, Hong Kong dollars. And if you pay a tool, you get another three. And you can do it one time, as it shows. And then we've got a yellow resource. And then we've got the scout. And the scout will give us uh, these... Uh, location markers which will come up in the scouting phase uh, but if we can get rid of a fuel or a knowledge we will get a location marker and they're very valuable because they will help you achieve your goal without sending somebody to the hospital possibly okay and then we can do a red resource a red resource single blue resource or we can do a doctor okay so what I could do then is I could play this card which gives me a red resource. And let's just say I, I go ahead and put it down that way. Okay. Actually, you know what? I'm going to do this differently. I'm going to put it that way. And then I'm going to take the doctor because the red resource is medical. So when I claim the red resource, I'll get one medical. And then I can spend that one medical to get character back. Well, I do want to build toward purple, purple yellow yellow so I'm, and she's purple so we'll put her on there I was originally trying something else to get her back quicker but we'll see how that works because right now I make people in the hospital and then <clears throat> the blue resource is the equipment so I think we'll go with that one so we'll put that there okay so I placed my three cards and that is the end of phase one. All right, so now we go to phase two. Get a marker up, and this is to deploy volunteers and specialists. So the volunteers are the ones that gather you resources. The specialists are the purple cards that uh, give you uh, uh, different actions. So let's flip this over. We'll go ahead and flip over the blue. Again, it doesn't matter. You control the order that they get played. So we got the blue. And so what I do is take one of my cubes, put it on the blue, and then I'll stay there until I spend it. And then I think this was this was purple. You can look at them. Uh, it's kind of fiddly, I guess, the way you have to kind of remember what you did and not and not uh, can't blame face up because then you're gonna know. What's there? It might be good to play them, like maybe upside down, like this. If you play them down like that, then you can see what you were gonna do. But then you can just flip it when you, when you play that. That might be a way to go too. So, red gives us a single red resource. And you see, these here that we're hopefully eventually gonna claim, and I plan to claim one here in this turn, um, give you two of that resource. And the cool thing is if I was playing him for two red, then I would put two cubes here. But also, if I needed to move him here, I would only have to pay one truck to move. It's the whole card moves, and you can't move part of it. So you're playing the two cubes, and you can move the two cubes, one, two, three, based on the transportation icon, the transportation markers. But you cannot split them up. But you don't have to pay one for each either. So... His time has not come. All right, so we have our medical, and now we will play our doctor. 
and we pay one medical. So basically all we gotta do is just take this off, turn it to our supply, and we can take the card from the hospital into our hand. And I will, I'm going to, I think I'm gonna leave the leader for right now. I'm gonna take this double blue. That's more valuable to me, I think, right now to get resources going. And it goes into my hand, plus, says you get the victory points for the card you took. So we get two victory points. So we move our track up. And it'll seem like this is going slow. And, uh, but it'll start picking up later. Especially as you start securing areas, uh, districts, and bringing them, you'll start getting mega points. Now you always have, so we've, let me just go ahead and say here, we've already finished Phase two, we've deployed our volunteers and our specialists. Now we're gonna move up to objectives. What I was gonna say is any time you have these two actions, you can spend five money to get a wild card resource, or you can spend one victory point to get a transport. If you're trying to place a location, you have to, you have to finish it. You can't move part way, and we'll cover that later probably but let's say i had a yellow and i only had one transport i can't well that's not a good example because that would count but if i need to skip two to get to a blue for example and i only had one transport okay the rule is i have to pay the victory point to get there i can't just say oh well i couldn't make it so i'm gonna stop there I mean, you have to you have to expend the victory point okay so now we're at the objective phase now we can complete any objectives available to us that's these ones on the cards or the ones over here in the emergency plan. Well, we cannot do A to A. We, don't, we can't complete any of the emergency plans yet. Okay, so we're gonna skip that. But over here, we have the option of taking, uh, oh, I got the wrong one. That's fine, that's fine. So we can pay one food and one uh, uh, resource, uh, one uh, supplies right, and, and complete this yellow card objective. So we will do that. So I'm gonna take one supply, and I don't have any food, but I can take my wild card and go ahead and spend that. That comes off. We have completed her requirements. So this card comes into hand, as the icon shows, and we get to place a yellow. We get to place a yellow location. Now, it has to be adjacent to where you have a cube. So I have one here. I could just go here, but that doesn't help me fulfill my goal on the emergency plan of A to A. So I'm going to show you. I'm going to go to here and skip one. And because I've skipped one, I have to pay one of my transport icons. All right. And so that is the end of the objective phase, because there's no more goals I can complete. All right, so now we're gonna go into scout mode. Now, the way scout mode works is pretty simple. You basically pick one of these districts that are uh, in your, um, that are, that you have a locate, you're on a location that's adjacent to one of the districts. So we have this one, so we could touch here, we could touch here, we could touch here, or whatever. So then, what we do is we're just gonna pick one at random here. So I'm gonna try this one. You take all three of the markers that are in here, and you look at them. And what they have is search points, and what they, that's the search points are the cost you have to pay. And the item on the right is the type it is and what you gain. So if we can spend eight search points, we get three victory points. If we can spend five search points on this one, we get one joker resource. Or if we can spend five search points on this one, we get two fuel. So you can only, you build these up and at the end of the game, based on how many of Based on how many unique types you have, you'll get bonus points. And if you get a duplicate 
So if I get this fuel one, and then I get another fuel one later, then it's still valuable to me because I turn it over, and I've got kind of a permanent search marker that adds to my adds to my search total, which allows me to get maybe towards some of these higher ones. Same thing with these GPS markers; they give you three search points. These you spend; these stay in your tableau. So. Anyway, we're getting ahead of ourselves. I am going to go ahead and try for this one because I need to make sure I have a fuel type and a victory point type. So, so how this works is on your cards that you have in your hand, on the cards that you have in your hand, you each card has one or two or three, possibly. Um, I think it's just maybe just two uh, search points. So you just have to basically reveal. It's another function of the hand management, is you just have to reveal uh, five search points. Now you can lessen that. Like I said, you can lessen that with. Uh, ones that are these that have been flipped over or the GPS tokens. You still have to send one uh, volunteer or specialist into the search. And the only one that can't go again was the doctor. So, so you have to choose wisely because at random, one of these is going to go back into, uh, into the hospital. Always. So what I want to do is I want to... I'm going to keep... I need five. I've got six. So I'm basically choosing who stays. And I am going to, at the moment, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to keep my mechanic. So I'm basically keeping that card in hand to ensure that it's not going to go to the hospital. So then all, all you really do, you know, you get the five points. Well, excuse me. Let's do this correctly. First of all, you take the three. You determine that you're going to try for this one, that you're going to complete that one. These now, since you're going for one, these go face up, back in the district they came from. Okay. And then the one that you're going for, all you got to do is equal or exceed it. So you could pay more if you wanted to, because only one goes back, so you could reduce the odds of any one particular card going back by paying more. But uh, I've never tried that. So anyway, so we got six. Oh, we got five. So we get this immediately. This comes into our tableau. We immediately get two fuel resources. And then we have to determine one of these who is going away. So we're going to roll. And we'll just say six is a reroll. And we got five. So not too bad, this red resource volunteer goes up into the hospital. And these, fortunately, come back into my hand. So that's good news. So this, they'll still be there for next turn. So it's not really that. It's a, it's a risk. And they don't count more if they have uh, more search icons on there. So for example, if, the, uh, if we had used the leader, see she has two search icons, right? So we used her, then she would still, she's just a card, it's just a person who would go back, so. All right, so that's done. So we're done with the scout phase. And the rules are on the board there. It says if you lose, if you scout, you lose one designated card to the hospital. Now, had we taken this stack, I'm not gonna look at them, but had we taken the stack, looked at them, and decided there was nothing we could take, you have two options. Like say they were all they were all huge eights and I couldn't have made eight this time. I can just say, no, forget it, and just put them back. The other option is you can take automatically, excuse me, not automatically, you can take the lowest point value. So let's say they've been like eight, 10, 12. You can take the eight one. You can just pay four search Somebody still goes to the hospital. You take that token, but you take it, you don't get any reward, and it doesn't count as one of your types, but you just take it flipped. So basically you're paying, 
paying for to get you know, permanent increase to your search capability. So that's a good option to keep available. I have done that before. All right, so now it's the next phase is the new objectives phase. Move up to there. And how this works is you can buy a card from one of these three rows. And if there are three cards in a row, it will cost you four. If there's two, it'll cost you three. If there's one, it'll cost you two. So you have to decide, and you can take, you don't have to take the, the right most, you can take any one in a row, but uh, it will cost you. So you gotta think wisely about which ones you take. Now, one caveat to what's coming up and one difference in the solo game. If you do not buy a card, if you have no money and don't buy a card, the rightmost card in the top row is automatically gonna get discarded at the end of this phase. Now later in the cleanup phase, and this is the same in the regular game, the rightmost card of each row is gonna get discarded. If a row, when a row empties, then you refill that row. You don't refill spots as they go, but you do refill when the row empties. So, um, so now we gotta decide on what card to get based on what we think we can achieve early on in the game. So you can't fall in love with any of these. And what I do like here is that secure the pharmacy because that gives me a medical resource pretty much every turn because that check mark icon, if I complete it. Now some of these, as you'll see, secure the pharmacy has two, uh, uh, two objectives, two goals on it. When you complete one, you can immediately take the card off your objective board, put it into your check marks. You can take, so let's say I completed this first here, then I can take one victory point, and then I could take this card off my objectives list, put it into my check mark area, so I can use that later, and then I can place any color marker. So it's a quick way to get it off the board. However, the bonus comes if you complete both objectives before you take it off. So you don't get any of these other perks. You get this when you take it off the board. I mean, off your player board. You get this, you can do this each turn, but then this you only get if you complete both objectives. But that, I like that one, because I like that health comes in handy because we have an option on here coming up later where I can turn a medical resource into a wildcard resource which is a big plus late in the game, because you can just, you know, one time you, you claim that one and then you claim the other, so it works out well. So, there were three in the line. That gives me, that means four. That's all the money I got, so put that in the bank. And that is the end of the objectives phase. So now we go to the cleanup phase. Any food and water we have to waste, we don't have any. Food you can sell. Food you would be able to sell for two money each, and one water you could sell for one money, or two waters you could trade for a, a GPS marker, which is worth three search points. So that works out pretty good too. All right, so nothing to waste there. And the other thing we have to waste is we have to burn the rightmost card from each row. So we discard those, and nothing emptied out, so we don't have to refill anything. Secure districts, a little early for that. Secure districts, you only secure them if you've got it completely surrounded. We do not, so we don't secure any districts. That turn is over. And then last but not least, we refresh our hand and carry out check mark actions. So that's where that'll come in handy once it's over on that side of the board. So if we're between, if we have four or less cards, we can uh, draw up our hand. We do not because we have five cards. So we have five cards in our hand and we cannot draw up. If we were to draw up, we would take that center column. If we wanted to, you can choose not to and play, play another round and try to let that build up a pattern. Because as you see there, we've got blue, red, blue. And to get, accomplish that, we need four of any type of resource, plus two blues and two reds and we gain 10 victory points and we gain that marker, which allows us to move that marker there, which tells us 
if we have six or less cards, we can drop our hand, which gets us to cycle through our cards faster. So that is the end of that first turn. And they'll move a little quicker now that I've kind of explained the steps. And hopefully you'll tune back in. So thanks for watching. God bless you. Bye-bye. Oh!